Before we move to that segment, I'm going to ask each panelist to give us, you've heard so much information this morning, so we just want to give you something to put in your toolbox that you can take away and say, yes, today, this is what I have learned and I can embrace and I can recall, because as you, you have seen from us panelists, we've, we've had numerous lists too. So we want to kind of help you to take something with you. So I'm going to start with Dr. Griffin and ask each panelist to contribute. I would say the, the most important thing as a neurologist is to look at the non-genetic things that affect um, memory problems and all the cognitive uh, functions. And the non-genetic ones are the vascular risk factors that were uh, enumerated by Dr. Uh, Bowles. What we're finding is, is this tremendous overlap between dementia and the different types of dementia, because Alzheimer's is only one type of dementia, the most common is that the vascular risk factors seem to influence Alzheimer's disease. And that may be the main thrust of researchers around the country and around the world, is how can you manipulate things that are not genetically programmed. And as a comfort, only 10% or so of the disorders that cause problems with the brain that end up as dementia is related to what you got in your genes. So the vast majority can be modified. Okay, that's the take home. Work on a brain healthy lifestyle. I'm gonna leave you with three tenets of what I call self-care reform, and that can be brain care reform. And so that's informing your body, empowering your mind, and healing your spirit. And so inform your body. Any type of movement, and if there's one movement that I want you to remember, it's that shoulder checking. Inhaling your shoulders up, exhaling all the back and down. That's inhaling, breathe, breathing in to the brain, connecting with your body, and being very present in the moment, informing the body. Empowering your mind. Spoke about before you go to bed. Have a word that has you feel the appreciation of the day that you live. And also have that same feeling in the morning. So one word, let's just make it one word. One word that gives you that appreciation of the day. You end the day with it, and you start the day with it. So empowering your mind. And healing your spirit. If you're a church member here at Allen Temple, you're, you're healing your spirit. If you're a part of some ministry, you're connected to your spirit. Again. Forming your body, empowering your mind, and healing your spirit. You can do that. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Penn. Dr. Bowles. This is always really a, a tough, because it's kind of a moving target, but I, I really um, see him in a, as a clinician and seeing patients. Um, one of the things I really try to emphasize to them is that you you can do better, you deserve better, and you are better. Is bearing this out. 
It doesn't matter if you've been a smoker for decades. If you stop, your body will start to heal itself. There is no, there, there is, you know, no complete permanent damage. You can correct some of these risk factors even if you stop smoking now. And you know what? If you stop and you, you quit and you, you don't make it, you're more likely to try again and to stop than someone who never tries quitting in the first place. So I really want you to, to remember that your body and your brain are very resilient. It's never too late to start a good habit, and it's never too late to stop one. So thank you.